Hello and welcome to my first ever YouTube video. I've been wanting to, really wanting to start a channel for a while. Like, I love making TikToks and going live on TikTok, you know, and just chatting. Um, so I'd love to get into like the vlogging side of YouTube, but there's nothing going on at the minute. Not a lot that's interesting. I've got the, some trips coming up, like, of course, COVID dependent. So uh, if they go ahead i'd love to start vlogging things like that but for now i really have a passion for true crime i'm obsessed with it always watching all the youtubers videos every documentary you name it i've probably seen it so i thought why not you know start off my youtube with something i'm passionate about i do have my laptop down here with google translate open because this is an italian case um from the early to mid uh 20th century in World War Two. Leonardo Tanchuli. Tanchuli. So this is the case of Leonardo Tanchuli. I'm not going to try it with Italian accents because I've never learnt Italian, um, so that would just be a failure. But yes, so Leonardo was born in a town in southern Italy. It was a really poor town, quite a small town, and she was actually conceived by a rape and her poor mother was forced to marry her rapist and birth Leonardo. As we'll go on to find out, she really um, was not dealt a nice card of hands by life. Uh, she was quite unlucky in the things she experienced throughout her life. And so that's something to take into consideration at the end into has that shaped her into the person that she became at the point of her crimes. Her mother was emotionally abusive to Leonardo as a child, which of course, of course is damaging. Um, Leonardo's father, biological father then died and her mother remarried, but this didn't really seem to improve her home situation at all as she actually tried to commit suicide twice during her childhood, um, which is of course awful. Later on in her life, is believed in rebellion to her mother and her stepfather she decided to marry someone on the i have not brought the notes of who he was so in sort of rebellion to her mother and her stepfather who had a suitor for leonardo to marry in an arranged marriage type situation she actually got married to a local registry office clerk named Raphael Pansi Italian pronunciation is coming through again. Leonardo was extremely superstitious as we'll come on to find out um, and she believed that her mother actually cursed her as a result of her actions of marrying this other man um, so that's that. And her misfortune didn't end there. She moved to a local town um, called Macedonia again don't know if I'm pronouncing that right and on July 23rd of 1930 she lost everything she lost her house her belongings in an earthquake so she moved again to another town called Correggio called Correggio no, which is near Naples and managed to kind of settle down there but that wasn't all of her traumatic life experiences she actually had a total of 17 pregnancies three of which she miscarried 10 of which died before the age of 10 um so she had four remaining surviving children so as a result she was extremely protective of these children as you can imagine with just such horrible circumstances like that who wouldn't be and this overprotective instinct was only fueled by a visit to two separate gypsy fortune tellers one of which told her in your right hand i see prison and in your left hand i see a criminal asylum and the other fortune te teller told her you will get married and bear children but you will watch them all die of course you can only imagine as a very superstitious lady that that's just more fuel to the fire um but leonardo didn't seem to take too much notice of this until years later in 1939 when mussolini began to draft men young men um in order for italy to enter into world war ii 
Well, and among these men um, to be drafted was Leonardo's eldest and favourite son, Giuseppe, um, which just threw Leonardo into a mental torment, of course, as anyone would during those times. The prospect of your husband, your children, your brother, anyone you loved going to war is an awful thing. But combined with her superstitions and what she'd heard from the fortune tellers, this only spiralled her even more. So during her trials, um, Leonardo claimed she was visited by some religious source. Some sources claim it was the Virgin Mary, other sources claim it was God, but the message Leonardo received with this was the same. And this message was that in order to save her sons, she had to sacrifice other humans. So God was still receiving these deaths and these sacrificed humans would take the place of her sons and her children would be okay. So Leonardo was set in her ways that this was the way human sacrifice was the way to save her children. Four children, so in order to save them all, she needed four sacrifices. So Leonardo's first victim was Faustina Setti, who was a lifelong spinster and she was unmarried, she was looking for a husband. She recruited Leonardo as a fortune teller and a matchmaker and she paid her 30,000 Italian lira. Right, and this is where it gets confusing because some sources claim that that was about 13 pounds at the time and equivalent to about 245 pounds a day. But other sources claim it was worth 350 pound at the time and about nine and a half thousand pounds today, which is a complete jump. I tried to work it out for myself. I'm not bad at maths, but I got so confused. It was late last night, I couldn't do it. So maybe I will do it and add it at the end, but if you really care, you can figure that out for yourself with the inflation rates and conversions. But that was a tangent. Leonardo claimed that she knew the perfect suitor in a village nearby for Faustina so she could go and get married finally. And of course, Faustina was over the moon. Um, yet Leonardo said to her, you can't tell anyone, which is very suspicious, but Faustina was just overcome with the excitement and went along with it. And furthermore, Leonardo then asked Faustina to write letters to her friends and relatives that Leonardo could later send on behalf of Faustina, saying that Faustina was okay. Which nowadays is just, no one would do, it's extremely suspicious and weird. But at the time, again, Faustina was just swept up with the excitement. She wrote these letters and postcards claiming she was okay for Leonardo to later send. Of course, with Leonardo's motives, he was, these were just going to be used as a cover up. So. No one would get suspicious and really start questioning where Faustina had gone. So in order for her final preparations of her trip, oh my god I can't read my finger, she, Faustina, headed over to Leonardo's house all excited, ready to go. Here she was greeted with a glass of red wine which was drugged and Faustina felt unconscious. Leonardo then proceeded to hit Faustina with an axe and chopped her body up into nine pieces. However, the next parts I think are the most fascinating. I'll read out a quote from Leonardo um, from her court trial. Leonardo quoted, I threw the pieces into a pot, added seven kilos of caustic soda, which I had bought to make soap, and stirred the whole mixture until the pieces dissolved in a thick, dark mush that I poured into several buckets and emptied in a nearby septic tank. As for the blood in the basin, I waited until it had coagulated, dried it in the oven, ground it and mixed it with flour, sugar, chocolate milk and eggs, as well as a bit of margarine, kneading all the ingredients together. I made lots of crunchy tea cakes and served them to the ladies who came to visit, though Giuseppe and I also ate them. You can see here that I find it hard to believe that this was just a case of human sacrifice because if you really were just committing, I mean, as if that's normal anyway, but if you were really committing these sacrifices in the beliefs that it was going to save your sons, why go the extra mile and do something so sadistic, making the remains into tea cakes and serving them to people? It's, it's another level of sadism and you have to 
truly surely be that in your core and it it can't just be a case of saving her children but that is what Leonardo claims so she found her second victim Francesca Suave who was looking for a job and Leonardo I feel like I've said her name so many times I can edit it out but if I don't take a shot every time I say Leonardo Leonardo claimed to have found a job for Francesca at a local girls school again in a village nearby Francesca was also convinced to write these letters claiming she was okay that Leonardo would later send on her behalf in an extremely similar series of events um, Francesca came to Leonardo's home for the for the final preparations um, before going to her new job in the next town which of course didn't exist and again was greeted with a poisoned glass of red wine followed by again being murdered with the axe. Again we're back to the confusing money so Leonardo actually gained 3,000 Italian lira from Francesca, which is a tenth of what she got from Faustina. So if you want to work that out, I'm confused. The reason I didn't spend too much time reading into it and working on it was because I the motive for these killings isn't the money. I think it's clear that it wasn't the motive for these murders, especially she's not preying on particularly wealthy people, well-off people. Francesca's body was then dealt with and disposed of in the same way as Faustina's, and unfortunately made into the tea cakes, which Faustina then served to neighbours and friends. So this leads on to Leonardo's next victim, Virginia Ca Cass Cassiopo. Virginia Cacciopo. Um, who was kind of a, she was a bit of a washed up opera singer, she was a soprano, she'd been amazing, she'd um, performed in Milan, she didn't have any work. And again, Leonardo went to her with a job proposal. He had found work um, for Virginia as a secretary for a mysterious impresario. They were someone that, um, organised the finances for plays, operas, you know, so it's still in the arts industry. Again, surprise, surprise, it was a secret, she couldn't tell anyone, she had to write the letters, um, which I think this time it was kind of more believable that it was a secret. If it was a mysterious person in this job, maybe you actually weren't allowed to tell anyone, but she went along with it anyway, no questions, and unfortunately met her fate in the same way as the other two. In her final preparation, she headed over to Leonardo's, was met with the poisoned glass of red wine and was killed with the ax. Unlike the first two, Leonardo went a step further with the disposal of Virginia's body. Um, I'll read out now what she was quoted saying during her court trial. She ended up in the pot like the other two. Her flesh was fat and white. When it had melted, I added a bottle of cologne and after a long time on the boil, I was able to make some most acceptable creamy soap. I gave bars to neighbours and acquaintances. The cakes too were better. That woman was really sweet. So she went the extra mile and made part of Virginia's body into soap as well as also making them into tea cakes and serving them to friends it's just it's just so sadistic it's just awful these poor poor ladies just thinking that they were getting out of this small town however thankfully virginia's sister grew suspicious of her sudden appearance and the last time she had seen Virginia was going into Leonardo's house, which immediately is just Leonardo's done for. So Virginia's sister went to the superintendent of the police um, and explained what had happened, explained this last sighting. So not long after Leonardo was arrested, that she wasn't the best at cleaning up the 
despite the way she dismembered the bodies there was still evidence all over her house so she was quickly arrested but she actually defended herself at the start um claiming she was innocent until police began to target her favorite son giuseppe and of course angel boy child that leonardo loves so much she does not want him to be targeted so she immediately point blank admitted it all and like in order to shift the blame off giuseppe because as far as we know he was not involved so these killings were between 1939 and 1940 obviously during which world war ii was going on so leonardo was actually only put on trial in 1946 after world war ii because they were fighting a world war they had bigger problems going on and she was just charged with murder she during her court trials showed no remorse she even corrected um officials during the hearing like she'd correct bits of information they'd got wrong or add little bits they didn't know which is just again it just adds to the theory like really was this a human sacrifice for the sake of your sons or do you genuinely just enjoy killing um another quote from leonardo during court is this i gave the copper ladle which i used to skim the fat off the kettles to my country which was so badly in need of metal during the war so she was bragging about the fact that she had helped her country by donating this metal in which she'd used to aid her ridding of poor ladies bodies of course leonardo was quite an old lady um so there were suspicions about how she dismembered and disposed no it was just how she dismembered these bodies so quickly and efficiently again kind of fueling the suspicions that maybe her husband or giuseppe or one of her other children was involved so officials took leonardo well one source claims i don't know how this is legal but apparently officials took leonardo down to the morgue to watch her in action to see if she could dismember a body um and she did successfully chop a body into nine pieces in under 12 minutes um so there you go um so leonardo was actually sentenced to 33 years in prison and three years in a criminal asylum which it's really eerie to me because if it's true about what this fortune teller had said she predicted prison um asylum but if that's true that's kind of eerie but i think that came from leonardo so to be taken with a pinch of salt maybe but yeah um her the tests on her sanity were really quite inconclusive there was a lot of professional opinions that were conflicting that just didn't agree had different diagnoses so she ended up being declared half insane not in short not sure what that means but that's what she was declared which resulted in those three years in a normal prison three years in um an asylum but i think her sentence in the asylum was actually longer because she died there of cerebral apoplexy um in the women's criminal asylum which i don't really understand why they did prison first and then the asylum maybe while she was in prison they did more psychological evaluations and discovered that she was actually was not mentally sane so prison wasn't the best place she needed to be in the asylum and um, so maybe that's why i'm predicting that's why because it doesn't really make sense any other way um, so yeah, that's basically the case of Leonardo Chanchuli. Oh, just some final points to kind of discuss about this case is it's not too uncommon for people to claim that they've had religious visits from a religious figure and that is why they've committed their the crimes that they've committed. That is why they've committed the crimes that they have committed. Sometimes this can be genuine and people do genuinely believe that that's what happened sometimes this is kind of a ploy um so they can be 
declared not mentally sane and get a lesser sentence or whatever it may be justice system's weird i'll let it do its thing but with leonardo i suppose as much as it could have been justice was served she was punished in prison all her life and she died in the asylum another point i just want to reiterate again i know i mentioned it throughout the video but why do what she did in the dismembering process there was no need to be so sadistic and, and disrespectful um there's a lot there's a whole 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 array of murderers some murderers will cover up victims to give them that piece of dignity leave them clothed some just burn them to completely get rid of the evidence but why just completely take away that person's everything everything of who they are the process of it of putting them of making them into a food is bad enough but then feeding it to your relatives your neighbors it's it's so insane to me and of course the case would have been awful as it was but i really think this just proves that leonardo was probably just sadistic at the core whether that's a product of her upbringing of course she had a very traumatic childhood further traumatic events throughout her life it would make sense or are we just born a killer that's all up for debate nature nurture bit of both who knows well, i'm gonna have to edit it this like hell because i get the same stuff wrong but i'm looking forward to it i really enjoyed this i enjoyed researching it i've enjoyed talking about it um, I've got a lot to improve on so don't be shy leave it in the comments or if you're one of my friends message me and let me know I am not going to be offended this is what it's all about it's my first ever video so yeah I think you can see I really enjoyed doing it so if you do want to stick around for more cases coming please do or if this isn't the type of video for you then I will um, do more diverse content coming up but at the end of the day I'm not doing this for the subscribers, I just enjoy it. So if you have stuck around and watched this case, thank you so much.